Welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Real glad that you could join us again. Going to be speaking with Dr. Justin Odegaard. He's currently Vice President of Clinical Development at Garden Health, and he's joining us here on the program to talk about Garden's clinical trials and companion diagnostic development. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Justin Odegaard. Thank you much, Neil. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Well, give us a little bit of insight into your role there at Garden Health, and um, let's talk about this uh, new development. Yeah, so Garden Health at its core is really a technology company that's focused on cancer care. And so today we do that primarily by offering liquid biopsies, which are blood tests that really provide information on how to treat an individual's disease. And of course, we're sort of amplifying that technology to bring that uh, to patients at all different steps of their uh, journey through the cancer care. Um, and early, sc- early screening as well as early detection of cancer studies and early cancer disease, et cetera. And so as part of that mission, my role is really um, responsible for operating the clinical trials that we do in the advanced cancer space, clinical oversight of patient care testing, as well as companion diagnostic development. But really today, I think it's mostly about the conduct of the clinical trials and then talking about the, the study that the recent study from the Gozilla group. Well, uh, let's talk about uh, some of the findings, if you would. Yeah, so we're very excited about the data um, from the Godzilla study. And at its core, the study is a very simple question. And that's, what's the best way that we can identify which therapy is best for advanced cancer patients? And, you know, to address this, the investigators used a nationwide clinical trial network, Scrum Japan, um, to assess the performance of sort of the two different options for approaching advanced cancer patient genotyping. The first one was tissue-based genotyping, which is the traditional standard of care. I mean, this requires uh, an invasive biopsy procedure to go in and physically take tissue out of the tumor um, for testing. And then that was compared with the second option, which is patients were genotyped using the Garden360 liquid biopsy, which instead of going in and invasively taking a tissue sample, uses a peripheral blood draw. So just going in and getting a normal blood draw as you would with routine testing for cholesterol. Um, or a CBC um, to do the testing to select best therapies for the patient. So what the investigators found is that across this large study, which had more than 8,000 patients in it in total, Mm -hmm. um, Garden 360's liquid biopsy was about three times as fast as the traditional route of tissue genotyping um, and placed more than twice as many of these patients onto the match targeted therapy. I think that's really important, but When both results were available, the results from both tests were available, the concordance was still really high, and the progression-free survival and objective response rates for both genotyping methods were similar, regardless of whether the patient was placed on therapy using traditional liquid approach or traditional tissue approaches or the liquid approach. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the really critical observation because it means that not only is liquid biopsy identifying the same patients that tissue genotyping would have, and thus we can treat them the same way. It just means it also is doing so faster and more efficiently. So what about uh, clinical trial enrollment? Right. And so this study was specifically about exactly that. So matching patients with targeted therapy in the context of clinical studies. And in that setting, you know, the data clearly show that liquid biopsy can accelerate patient enrollment, you know, and markedly so which is congruent with other work that uh, has been presented by other pharmaceutical collaborators uh, on large studies. Um, And given that, I think that trial enrollment is one of the longest holes that we have in the development of new therapies. I think these results are really important there because it's clear that liquid biopsy can accelerate that long step and bring these new therapies into the clinic faster where they can benefit patients sooner. But, you know, beyond simply enrolling the patients, I think there's also advantages that liquid biopsy can bring um, that's u- that are unique to that platform, uh, unique re- relative to tissue. And, you know, this includes capturing tumor heterogeneity, both spatially and over time, longitudinal. Um, and indeed, we're seeing a lot of active developments in those areas with our uh, pharmaceutical collaborators as well. Is Garden360 useful in all types of uh, cancer? Yeah, so Garden360 was recently approved by the FDA for tumor profiling in all advanced cancers, advanced solid tumors. And so we, it is really designed to be kind of a one-stop shop for any advanced solid tumor that patient that needs genotyping. Just grab a Garden360 and it'll give you the answers you need for routine standard of care. What are Garden's future plans for the technology? 
So I think, you know, this study that we're looking at very much looked at a clinical study, enrollment in a clinical study, but the logistics and the clinical realities addressed by the investigators were exactly the same as those faced by oncologists treating patients in general practice. And here, I think you can see that the technology dramatically improves speed and diagnostic yield, which is every bit as important in routine patient, patient care, even more so. And so these benefits that we saw in the clinical scenario in the Godzilla study, I think will transfer um, exactly to patient care um, in the real world patient care, I should say. And I think we've already seen some literature that supports this, such as the Nile clinical study, although albeit in smaller cohorts. And so that's, I think, one key takeaway uh, about the future of this technology, that it really is ready for standard of care and delivering personalized medicine in advanced cancer. But for gardens, um, you know, I think we want to make sure that we have the maximum impact across the continuum of care. And when we talk about that, we're really moving our technology upstream into early cancer, where the impact of personalized medicine is much more potent than in the advanced cancer space, and even up further into the cancer screening, where we can identify patients who are very early in their course and thus um, more, much more readily uh, curable from their disease. And I think perhaps just to highlight one, one activity that we're doing is the Eclipsed uh, Clinical Study, which is a blood-based colorectal cancer screening study of more than 10,000 patients, which is really intended to validate uh, blood-based testing as a way to augment colonoscopy and other screening methods to improve their adherence to rec screening recommendations. And I think that this has an enormous uh, potential to really alter and positively influence cancer patient survival. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? I think perhaps just to provide one clear takeaway from the study is that liquid biopsy is really now part of today's standard of care. And it's the way to best deliver personalized cancer care to patients, whether they're in a clinical study or not. Give us a website where we can learn more. So www.gardenhealth.com. Well, I enjoyed our conversation this evening, uh, Justin. I'm hoping that we'll speak again in the future. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Justin Odegaard, currently Vice President of Clinical Development at Garden Health. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.